paper, one of many now that are trying to model the uh, coronavirus outbreak using what's called the SEER model, which stands for Susceptible, Exposed, Infected and Recovered. And one of my patrons wants to get some of his staff to see if they can transfer this model to Minsky. So what I'm going to do quickly is show why Minsky is a good vehicle for this sort of work. And then in a couple of later videos, uh, put the whole uh, lot together. So this is the model. Um, and it's a set of differential equations, which is the standard thing in modeling any dynamic process. Uh, this is the rate of change of people who are susceptible, the rate of change of those who are exposed, have infected, have recovered and dead. And of course, when you fall out of one group, you've got to fall into another. So there are matching terms throughout here. But there's the term for those who are exposed, and there's exactly the same term down here. So all these things have to match. Now, that's quite difficult with some straight differential equations. And it's also quite difficult using flowcharts, which is the way that this is done uh, in standard uh, system dynamics programs. This is just a, a sketch by the authors of the sort of logic. So you, you start off in the susceptible group. Uh, there are a set of parameters to decide whether you become part of the exposed group. Then one parameter to decide whether you become infected, having been exposed. A parameter for those who die, another one for those who recover, and then two parameters to take you back here from having recovered to being susceptible once more because we have seen some cases of people getting the disease again. So when that's modelled in MathCAD, oh, sorry, not MathCAD, in, in, uh, in MATLAB, uh, the authors of this paper have put it together on a dashboard. Now, you need to have a copy of MATLAB Sim Simulink, which is MATLAB's uh, system dynamics program, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good dashboard, but I want to show how this can be done rather more uh, graphically in Minsky. So the first part is to take advantage of one unique feature of Minsky, and that's what we call the godly table. Now, a godly table uh, enables you to build equations of financial flows simply using double-entry bookkeeping. And you don't really have to know that you're actually creating a set of differential equations. You simply type in what the flows are from one account to another and Minsky then generates the equations for you in the background. So we normally use that for money. So if you have a, if you pay, uh, if Tom pays Dick, then the amount of money goes out of Tom's account and precisely the same amount of money goes into Dick's account and Minsky makes sure that all these flows sum to zero. So if you type something in assets, uh, then the sum of liabilities and equity on the same row must bring that out to zero. Now that can be used, uh, that's of course mainly used for financial modelling, but we can use it quite nicely here for the uh, infection models as well. So they use N for population, I'm going to start with N, and for the heck of it I'll start with the American population of 350 million. Then you have uh, your susceptible, and initially everybody is susceptible, and this is a simple start to the mod it, Models I put the same same number, 350 million in susceptible, and, and Minsky is now saying, okay, your initial conditions are balanced. Now, having been susceptible, you can also be exposed, uh, you can be infected, you can die, uh, and you can also, and this is the one you hope to get into, recover. And I'm going to use equity for that. I, I don't have to, but it makes sense to say that's your equity. You want as much as possible to turn up and you're recovered. Now, having done that, you then have the various parts of the model. And these authors, uh, because the coronavirus spread so quickly, they decided to abstract from population growth, uh, which is quite sensible. So I'm not going to, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just have the process, process of being uh, exposed. And that does, that takes you out of the uh, susceptible group and puts you in the exposed group. I'm just using abbreviations to make it easier to type. Uh, then you, you you get it, get the disease, and I'm cheating here because I'd, I'd like to use the word infected, but at the moment there's a bug in Minsky where if you type the letters INF, it interprets that as infinity. That won't be the case for the next version of Minsky, but it's the case right now. So just to be to be, uh, to be safe, I'm just going to type get as the word there. I've made a mistake, by the way. That's supposed to be a negative, and this is what Minsky does. It says that's not balanced. Uh, so I've got to go back here and type a minus key. So you go from the, you get the disease, you go from being exposed to infected. And once you've done that, you can go to uh, die, which is not the fate you want, but that's what's happening to a significant proportion of people. So you go, from, you go from the infected group to the dead group, and then there's also the possibility of recovery. And that means you go from the infected group 
and I'll just show RHC, and you end up in the recovered group, which is preferable. But what we also know, just actually make this a bit larger, we also know that a lot of, not a, but some people seem to get reinfected. Uh, and I'm going to type get the disease again because if I type infected, I'll get the infinity sign turning up there. So, uh, so I'm going to have here, you can go, uh, whoops, minus get again, and you end up getting back in the infected group again. Right, now, now I've done that, I know that those equations are balanced. Uh, but where are the equations? Let's take a look. So there's the actual uh, godly table flow of people out of the various groups uh, who've been exposed or not exposed to coronavirus. That's all you see when you're working on the, on the, on the program itself. You just see that uh, icon. And what's actually Minsky has done in the background is create these equations. And I know uh, that these are all uh, accurately balanced. You, um, you can't, uh, you, you, I'm not going to make a mistake of leaving out one part of an equation when I include another, which is feasible if you try to do the equations straight from something like that. Uh, or even if you do it as a flowchart. So I'll leave it at that and I'll then start with the next point, which is I want to give all the values of the various parameters here, the beta, uh, the tau e, alpha, etc., etc., and have those ready to start converting those placeholders into actual equations. There's a number of parameters in this model and I want to make sure that I can reproduce what the authors currently have. So I've gone across to using a population of North Korea, South Korea uh, which is their, their initial study. So they say it's roughly 51.5 million. Uh, that's the value they've got down here for N. And elderly population of 15%, which is in uh, lowercase or uh, subscript old. Well, I want to put that into Minsky. And what you can do with Minsky is simply type uh, whatever your uh, variable is onto the canvas. And we use the commands of LaTeX for formatting mathematics. So an underscore tells uh, latex to, to lower the next character, uh, but I want to lower a set of characters, so I type curly brackets, old, close curly brackets, and that then uh, defines that it's all being subscripted as it's done in the article here. And they're giving that a value of, um, where are we, 15%, so I want that to be 0 0.15, and that's a parameter, so I choose this as a parameter, and I'll give it a, a, a reasonable range to cover from the oldest to the, to the youngest populations. Let's say there's 50% is your maximum number. It might be old, um, say 5% is your minimum, and the step size is 0 0.01, so you can modify this for, for other countries. Okay, so that's defining an old. Now, there's a, quite a range of parameters. Oh, by the way, one annoying bug we haven't got you rid of yet, which is it's simple, but we haven't, haven't got, put it on the priority list. Notice how this cursor is a... Uh, it's sort of cursor you move when you're moving something around. Uh, that happens when you when you define a variable. If you want to go back to the usual pointer, just press the shift key and it goes back between the two. Okay, that's in old and let's see what some of the other parameters are here. So one of them is kappa uh, is 0 0.98 which is the recovery rate. So to type kappa you type a backslash key followed by the English word kappa which is the, you know, the, the, the word for the Greek K, and then call that a parameter, and what value do they give that? 0 0.98, I think, 0 0.98. And let's say the maximum that could be is one, obviously, and so the minimum is 0 0.8, let's say, and a step size of 0 0.01. So that's kappa. And I'll just keep on doing uh, the same and go through and define all the other parameters in the, um, paper and then come back to the next stage of putting the equations together. The case when you're trying to uh, do a model like this, the hard part is working out where the parameters are and how they're defined. Um, so I had to look all over the place to find how beta was defined and uh, it, it wasn't direct at all so a bit of mucking around was necessary. But I want to show, uh, compare how Minsky defines this particular expression which is beta times infected times susceptible divided by population. Uh, we, uh, this is a, we've done as a straight mathematical equation and at some stage we will support that as well. That's a development we're working on courtesy of our grant from Friends Provident Foundation. But what we do at the moment is use the flowchart approach. So you have beta here, 
multiplied by i, multiplied by s, divided by m. And one thing which we have tried to do as much as possible in Minsky is to reduce clutter, because one thing which gets in the way of people understanding system dynamics programs, and Minsky is part of that family of programs, is that there's so many uh, items on screen that you get overwhelmed and you can't read what the hell's going on. So what we have here is any, any operation which can be overloaded is overloaded. So we have multiply here, and if we... Well, you can see I've, I've dragged three things in together here, beta multiplied by i multiplied by s and then divided by n. That is exactly the same as this equation here. And if you take a look at the equation tab for Minsky, I find it there, there's the expression. I can't, I can't amplify that all that much, but that's, that's the expression there. So that's what you do in terms of defining a set of variables. And now what I've got is the numbers for exposure. Then I had the numbers for those exposed to get infected. Well, that's uh, the number who currently are exposed multiplied by rate alpha and that's the, just to show you some of the complicated whoops, complicated stuff that was necessary to um, uh, define this in reading through the paper alpha was actually defined as the inverse of tau inc where tau inc is the uh, in, in, in increase rate I think it's the in incubation time so the incubation time is five days alpha is the inverse of that I actually think this is fairly uh, well, not badly written paper, but they don't understand system dynamics. I would have used this straight away, which is uh, Tau Inc., uh, which is the, just basically says it takes 5.1 days normally for the disease to be incubated. Turning it to alpha with a value of just under um, uh, 0.2, it's very hard to work out what the hell alpha is. That actually makes more sense. But I think the people that did the paper were not familiar with, uh, with the standard approach of system dynamics and time and time constants. Anyway, having done all that, uh, I've, here I've defined exposure, here I've defined actually getting the disease, and here I've defined dying, and that is dying for those who are not in the uh, older cohort. So this is the proportion of the population which is not older than 65. Um, in this particular paper they estimated that uh, if we're using South Korea's data, about 15% of the population was uh, over 65, therefore 1 minus 15% is the proportion that are actually younger. They have a survival rate of 98%, so 1 minus 98% is how fast they die, and you then multiply it by the infection rate and by delta, and I have to look and see what delta is defined as. Delta, again, is one of these things they define. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they say, but they don't actually explain uh, recovery time is the same as time in hospital, and this delta is the inverse of the time spent in hospital by those who ultimately die. Uh, so having done all that, this is still a long way from defining the entire set of equations. Uh, if I take a look over here, you'll see that I have um, I have get defined, and I have die old defined, and get it, but, but I haven't got die old defined. Well, let's work on that just to show how Minsky does a definition. So you look at die old, uh, as part of this set of equations here. Um, this is the death rate by those who are... Oh, what's one of the old ones? Um, yeah, this one here. 1 minus the survival rate times those who are old, and the delta factors there as well. So I need to have delta times 1 minus uh, kappa old times n old times i. And so what I have there, I've got 1 minus uh, uh, kappa old. I need to multiply that by... N old, so I'll take a copy of that and bring it down here and type a multiply block and then multiply that by uh, N old and then I need the delta as well so take a copy of that item and drag this across and multiply that together and I've now got my d death rate for the old cohort is 1 minus kappa old divided multiply N old multiplied by delta and just to check and see that that's correct 1 alpha minus 1 minus kappa old times n old and way out here of uh, the, uh, those who are infected. I've broken it into two bits because I can do that with Minsky. It's, it's just easier to break it into two sets of death cohorts. Now when I drag this in here, I've now pretty much defined the, the death rate. The model is still incomplete, but just to give you an idea of the dynamics and the fact that Minsky runs the dynamics for you, uh, Actually, you see the simulation as it's going ahead, and it all looks funky dory until day 60. This is the typical thing about an exponential process. Nothing happens, and then everything happens all at once. So the uh, the green line is the infection. The uh, E is the exposed, which is 
um, the cumulative, those who are currently exposed and haven't been transferred to infected, so infections are overwhelming, those who are exposed. Those who are susceptible is plunging, and then we're starting to see a rise in those who have recovered and also those who have died. So let's just go on a bit further here. Okay, and then finally you have everybody's got infected and now you have a decline in the infection rate because of the increase in the death rate. And also, I, I haven't put the recovery rate in the side here. But that's the basic idea. And um, I, I know that for people who haven't seen this sort of work before, uh, it does look fairly, you know, fairly complicated. But uh, it is a lot simpler to do this sort of design in Minsky than it is in a program like Simulink or certainly a program like Vensim. And the main assistance we're getting is well, several factors. First of all, the godly table lets me make sure that my equations are consistent. So once I've defined these terms, if they occur in two locations and they do, they're identical. I can't make a mistake in typing the equation in. I also, uh, most of the programs don't let you trans have a variable like, like I heard die old. You've got to have wires all over the place. And I know there are a lot of wires there, but trust me, there'd be far more uh, in the Simulink model that this is built on uh, the, other, the, the uh, paper users and certainly a package like Vensim. It'd be just uh, unreadable. So you can get through, you can understand what's going on by reading a diagram like this. I can add more graphs if I want to graph the uh, Let's see the exposure levels. So I can just say who's who's what's the rate of of, of getting new infections? Uh, what's the rate of what else have we got here? Uh, yeah, rate of death. And I can I can add the two together. Let's just do that. So, uh, so it's a fairly it's a visual interface to help you design your. Whoa, there we go. Decline and rise. Uh, let's see how the death rate starts to take off. Yeah. Okay. So what you tend to do is iteratively muck around with this sort of stuff. So what I what I think is sensible here is to divide that by population. So if I take population over here and delete that wire and divide the number who are getting the disease by the population and do the same for the, the death rate here. So delete that wire, take a copy of uh, population and divide that. And then you're seeing a percentage rate, refractional rate. And it starts off extremely low, and then of course it rises like buggery, which is the why the disease like this is so dangerous since it's so infectious. Oh, hang on a sec, I made a bit of a mistake there. That's actually the, the top of the... You'll notice that there are four inputs on the side, which are straight, and two on the top and bottom, which are on an angle. They actually set the um, the top and bottom, the, the, the margins of the of the model. So that's, that was actually giving you the top value of the graph there rather than the actual value. So that will now plot the actual value. Let's just have a look at that. Okay. The model needs to get a lot more before it's totally complete, but this is the sort of thing you can do. And I, um, because Minsky is open source, once this is finished, I'll put it up on my Patreon blog for freely accessible and people can take a look at it and play with it and see what the impact is of, uh, of this virus and how you can compare different countries to each other.